Vintage Magnavox console stereo. Another beauty up for your consideration. Actually, it's in pretty good shape. I had it covered with uh, a piece of cloth when I was moving it and it kind of got stuck, but I think we could clean this up with a little furniture polish. Uh, you know, the top does need to be refinished. I think this is pre, pre astrosonic. Oh, it does have stereo FM. I wonder if it has a multiplex decoder in it. Has a meter in the middle there. So we have speakers external, both internal tuning. And that appears to work. We have stereo phono, stereo FM, 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 AFC, AM, and auxiliary. And I noticed over here we have an iPod jack and this. This must connect to this. So it is iPod ready. Does anyone use iPod anymore? I know phones don't even have this connector, the new phones. But yes, yeah, somebody took the time to drill a hole there and feed that through. Record storage. Loudness, bass, treble. We have Imperial Micromatic Record Changer with 45 RPM adapter. Stereophonic High Fidelity. Does have the flip over needle with the brush. It looks like it's all there. We're going to go through this thing. It could really use some TLC. We're going to go through this thing and see how it works. Isn't that supposed to be screwed in to release it so it sits on springs? The front, the front's springy but the back is not fake fake do nothing these my experience with these is lots of open plate re resistors. These have crappy resistors in them. I'm assuming this has a tube amp. And yes, this is up for adoption. It needs to go away. This would, this would make a great piece in one of those Hollywood flats. A lot of potential here. I mean, the cool factor is where really where it's at. You know what? Let's power it up and see what happens. I put power to it. Well, the light is on. I 
Now, I was under the impression they were using this. It's totally silent. But I am getting a very distinct hot burning smell, which is quite sensual. Um, I mean, you would think with, a, with this connector here, it wasn't used that long ago. It's totally quiet. No hum, no crackle, no static, nothing. It's silent. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it don't smell happy. Yeah, it, it really no smell happy. All right, well, we got a, we got a resurrection problem. Not a resurrection problem, we got resurrection potential here. We have a resurrection patient. Something for tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, it smells, uh, smells like it's getting ready to bake. I can smell it all the way over here. Damn. Let's fix this thing, get it working again, diagnose it. And you can see I'm not really in the mood to squat on my knees or lay on my belly and work on this so what I've done is I've lifted it up and put it on chairs to save my back. I sprayed a little bit of this on it on this uh, where this uh, the blanket I had on top of it kind of fused to the uh, and I'm gonna let it sit here and, and see if that'll clean off if not it can just be sanded a little bit and refinished it probably needs to be refinished anyway uh, we fired it up yesterday and it just produced a really unhappy odor so something's not right wow look at this this amp is worth more than the whole thing probably by a factor of five uh, two 12 ax7s four six bq5s look at those nice Nicely sized audio output transformers for, you know, a, a kind of a console stereo. I mean, it's not hi-fi, but it's, uh, we have uh, the crossover network here. We have horn tweeters. Maybe not tweeters, but high-end. Nice big horns. What are those, 12s? Looks like over here, this is probably the stereo multiplex decoder add-on chassis. Uh, another nice size horn, 12. And then up here is the stereo tuner. I wish the thing was, I like to lift this thing up about another foot. So I could... Uh, get easy access this is not nothing gonna be easy here well they did provide a, a quite a long lead length there to work on it this was not the low-end model was it well sorry those are not uh, 12 ax 7s or 6 eu 7s so my bad there and this is the uh, multiplex decoder right here it looks like we have date codes of 62 in here I uh, saw that right here these tubes are made in uh, West Germany 6215 it's the date code yeah 6 EU 7 it's probably a dual triode So let me get a light bulb and let's, you know, Magnavox is really weird with model numbers and SAMs. Looks like we do have a model number here, if I could read that. Let's 
something 659 well this looks like it was maybe something ST659 I'm striking out finding anything like this in the Sam's book we're gonna start with a 150 watt bulb here I got a 300 right there I got the phono off this chassis is the power supply for the whole set so there is no separate power supply for the tuner up here or the multiplex well, here we go I, I think the wattage is, what is the rated wattage here, 190? Well, what's interesting is that didn't get any brighter. I remember this thing was totally quiet. What it should do is it should flash bright. And then it should drop down, which it did, which is the filaments are low resistance when they're cold. Now what it should do is it should start to get brighter as the tubes start conducting. As the tubes warm up and start drawing power, it should get brighter, which it's not. So I wonder if... Or if this guy is ooh, it almost goes out when I pull that out. Why would that be? Is this guy shorted, leaky? Wow. Sure seems to be drawing a hell of a lot of power through there. getting dimmer with each one I pull out. So obviously it's pulling, these tubes are conducting, they're pulling power. Why is there just absolutely nothing from the speakers? Not a scratch, not a crackle. I don't know. Really hot. Pretty hot. Pretty hot. Cool. Yeah. Something something's not equal there. That's not why we don't have. That's not why it's totally quiet. Okay, we got our battery pack here. As far as I know, this gentleman told me this thing worked. I, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means it smelled like it was working or. Gonna, this has to be the speaker. Let 
nothing. Totally frickin' quiet. What the hell is going on here? I mean, that's what I expect, a little crackle. Okay, what's going on here? Well, these are the wires that were connected to the amp. Those are going up to the speaker switch. The wires coming down from the speaker switch are these two. This one and this one. And so they go to two sides of the crossover. They go to... Well, one lead goes directly to the woofer and then the other goes through the capacitor and then the resistor to the horn tweeter. So, What's interesting is something's wrong here because that is making noise and I'm using a current, current limiting light bulb. That's making noise through both speakers. So what, what the... I don't get it. Okay, I'm being stupid here. I had this connected to chassis. So what's weird is when I connect this to ground, right here, why does it mute? Okay, so that's the right side. That's the right side. But then the left side is very muffled. You know what, let me unplug this. That's the switch. Okay, we got a short. That switch is screwed up. did we lose this side without the switch connected? Okay, something's going on. Okay, I'm being stupid here. I'm unplugging the wrong thing. I'm unplugging the tweeter when I should be unplugging the switch. It's a real good video. But I'm not getting any crackle through the tweeter, so... There we go. So these capacitors are probably open. What are these? Six microfarads? There we go. There's left and right. So uh, this switch is jacked up, this uh, speaker switch. This is something the capacitor wizard is good for. So right here we got about 50 ohms. And over here we got about 50 ohms and this to ground is a short so that that is ground for sure so left right ground yeah this is measuring it at a hundred kilohertz so it it doesn't it doesn't measure like a one ohm transformer with a hundred kilohertz okay so the switch has been bypassed and the switch will probably get deleted because I cannot imagine anyone using this with external speakers in the 2020 era. Oh, we have crackleage now. See that? That's what we want to hear. Interesting. I'm going to reverse these because I got this backwards. 
I mean, I guess it's depending on if you're looking at it from the back or the front, really. But uh, with them like that, then this side here will be that speaker, and this side here will be that speaker. Yes, correct. The hell. Just worked, huh? Yeah, it just worked. It worked. Guess we could start by putting the right knobs on the right place. That's not correct. That's not correct. That is correct. Yay. Oh yeah, it just worked. Yeah, it works. It works. It works. That's what I was told. It works. There's nothing wrong with it. You won't need to do anything to it. Yes. It works, but it's absolutely dead. Oh yeah, listen to that. Listen to that working. The little meter down here is not moving on AM or FM. There's no scratchy from here. There's nothing. Interesting. We have activity there, but why don't we have any activity here? This is going to be a long, sloppy video. Where do they have this plugged in? This is our iPod input. They have that plugged in. Oh boy, I have to get down on the ground. What do they have that plugged into? Here's the phonograph. The f Why do they have a space there between where they have those input? Input. Why do they have it plugged into input one and input one instead of input one and two? What kind of short bus are we riding over here? This never worked. out of here for a minute all right here's that iPod connector I pulled that out so what we should be able to do is unplug this and go right into the amp oh yeah that's hot oh yeah that's real hot we should be able to stick this right in the phone since I still have an old phone Let's see what do we want to do here a little Pablo Cruz
Yeah, nothing coming out of the tweeters. The tweeters, the capacitors are open. Okay, this is a uh, two microfarad. And yes, we do have audio here now. What have we got so far? We've got two open capacitors here, a bad speaker selector switch up here. Uh, the amp is working. We have three tubes that are getting hot and one tube that's just warm. So that's just a start. I think what I need to do next is I need to figure out how to get this out and um, start checking resistors. Like I said, the pl these things, the resistors go open in these Magnavoxes. Brilliant engineer, engineering, brilliant, brilliant. Just, I guess it has to come out through the bottom. Okay, so we have play, tape, play, and record. So they had, they had the iPod thing plugged into number one of play and number one of record. So the phono is. This is the phono, and it looks like this is out to multiplex, and these are these are the ones that go to the amp right here. So they're hardwired in there. And then this is, okay, that's the multiplex back in. Okay, so, this one's warm. That one's warm. This one here is cold and I believe that's the audio output. This is the one that drives into the amp. Why is that cold? Okay, I think we just have a case of dirty tube sockets here. Cause it, Yeah, now we're getting activity all of a sudden. I think this is a case of dirty tube sockets. Yeah, now it's shut up again. Now this one's hot. That one's hot. This one's not getting hot. All right, this is kind of an unconventional way to test this filament, but I'm hooked onto the filament here. You can see where the filament connects in there and I should be getting a light bulb here and I'm not. See if I short these together I get a light bulb there. See the light bulb? And I'm not getting it. So the filament in this 6BE6 is open. Now I don't know what this tube is. 6BE6 is that the AM converter? So would that affect FM? All right, I, I hooked my phone back up and I'm plugged into the right place here and...
So the, the reason why it was totally quiet was because that tube is not making good contact in the socket and was the heaters were not getting hot. This tube is open, but I think we should still have FM because this is 6DT6, which is should be the uh, front, the FM, RF, and oscillator, then two 6BA6s, then a 6AL5. And I don't understand why the FM is t totally dead. But now we have some... You know, now we have some drive now that we got that tube online. I don't see what could be wrong with this. This is the speaker switch. I don't see what could be wrong with this, but this was the other thing causing it to be totally quiet. 6DT8. There's one section of it. There's the other section of it. Assuming this little toy tube tester is good. Let's try some of the other ones. Okay, there's the first BA6, 6BA6. Isn't this thing cutesy cutie pie? Six BA6, that's a IF amp, yes. IF amp. Here's the other six BA6. Um, the other IF amp. Okay, here's the 6AL5. This would be the FM detector. So there's one of the tubes. One of the diodes, I'm sorry. Here's the other diode. So the FM front end tube is dead. The AM front end tube is dead. So, uh, yeah. No wonder why it's not working. Let me see if I can find a 6... BE6 converter. That's the one with the open filament. Let's see if we get AM working. And then if we get AM working, we have a pretty good idea. The reason why FM is not working is because that 6DT8 is dead. Okay, I found a replacement 6BE6. That was the one the filament was open on. So let's see. Let's see what we get now. Ooh, the stereo light just came on. Or is that, is that a stereo light? Ooh. A TikTok video. Yeah, TikTok. This is this is FM. Seguridad cerca de sus derechos, especialmente cuando se trata de compensación al trabajador. Así que made the abbot Saint Benedict and There we go. There's extremely active and a person like that isn't very So the FM probably needs an antenna. Let's see if I got a clip lead here. Let's go back to the FM. That is canceling some tour dates. Hey, good morning. It's Carrie Steele. So happy to be checking in to share some of your Monday workday with you. Yeah, 9-5. They announced through Facebook that they were canceling the U.S. leg of their world tour. They said in a statement that due to issues in Facebook. Oh, yeah. Roll out with a little Whitney Houston here. More cocaine, please. Let's see. FM stereo. Cancel some dates for various reasons. What a basket case this thing is. The FM multiplex is not working.
Interesting. It doesn't use that for FM. Maybe, maybe the FM woke up because I bypassed the light bulb and now the filaments are getting more voltage. But yeah, what a basket case is this. That's multiplex. Well, that one's not hot. That one's not hot. That one's hot. This one's warm. This one's not. 12AT7. This one is not hot. Cold. Six A B four. That's a tube I've never heard of before. Six A B four. It almost looks like a six C four. Just a triode. Yes, I want your ugly. I want your disease. I want everything as long as it's free. Six A B four D three one six. Um. Twenty. So, I don't know why it's not getting warm, unless it's another bad socket. It's getting warm here. Okay, uh, that's one section of the 12AT7, and then 6 and 7. So this tube is good too, I wonder why it's not getting hot. More bad tube sockets. I'm going to heat it up here, then I'm going to move it over there. If I can do it fast enough. And now is it, boy that sounds good, listen to that. It's in, the multiplex is in perfect alignment. You can just hear the clarity, crank it up a little bit. Oh look at now it's working. What the hell? So, no matter where I move this little triode, I cannot get it to heat. So, this thing has a bunch of bad tube sockets in it. The, the ones that are bad are these flat kind of fiber ones. These are the ones, they're all not making contact. These ones, the black ones like that, are fine. Those are fine. It's these flat paperboard ones that are not making good contact. And that goes, that's this one, this one, those down there. Those are all the paperboard ones. Yeah, it's very... Well, I mean, what to do with this thing? It almost seems like... It almost seems like it'd be just the best idea is to yank the amp and sell it. Because... Um, is going to be too much of a headache. I mean, this thing really needs to be adopted by someone who works on this stuff and who wants to put the TLC in to change a bunch of tubes and tube sockets and align it and who has the capacity to align the FM multiplex. Uh, let's see if the turntable works. Oh, wow. Can I listen to my... Can I listen to my record here? I want to listen to my record. I wonder if there's any tip left on that. LP. Let me go see if I can find a disposable record. We get the phone on this and see what speed it's running. Can't beat that. No, you can't. 
See what we've got here. Sax machine on Tribal America. Love is the message. I'm not going to screw up the cut I like, though. Crap, you can't beat that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think the needle on this is kind of trococroculated. Let me try the 78. God, that sounds horrible. This side is clean. Every night about this time, Foxtrot. I don't want to ruin my 33s on this junk. So let's, that's 78, right? It's hauling ass, okay. So the first thing it'll do is it'll tap the record. Well, I guess it won't do anything. That's how it measures the start point. Every night about this time, oh, how I miss you. Every night about this time. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's see what we got on this side. Strip polka. I think I played this before. Okay, so this side sounds like trash, and I'm going to try flipping these to see if that's coming from the cartridge or what. So when I flipped the output of the the turntable, gramophone, record player, whatever that thing is called. Uh, the distortion did not follow, so that means that the distortion's here, I think. It's not in stereo anyway. I unplug one and it's still coming out of both speakers. So this one is coming out of that speaker over there. But that one's coming out of both speakers. What's up with that? That's coming out of both speakers. Take it off, take it off. There's issues in here. And I don't see what could cause that besides maybe the switch. Some type of leakage in the switch. So yeah, that's what it does. It swings out, it measures the record. Then it comes back out and it swings out. If it doesn't see a record there, if it doesn't tap a record, then it shuts off. Yeah, it's working. And it's well lubricated too. That's on coast right there. I 
That is very well lubricated. This, I think this thing's worth more in parts. Someone could use this. Someone could use the amp. Uh, the tuner is a basket case. The multiplex decoder is a basket case. Let's see how it's doing here speed-wise on 78. It's probably about exactly dead on without the weight of the phone and cup. So, so far, the 33 stylus is garbage. The capacitors for the tweeters in the crossover are bad. We have one, probably one weak audio output tube. We have bad tube sockets here. We have a bad 6BE6. We have an issue in here that's causing left and right separation and distortion in the right channel of the phono input. We have alignment issues with the multiplex and a tube that's not getting hot in the multiplex. And we have a bad speaker selector switch. Oh yeah, it was working when I took it out of mom's house. It was working fine. Oh, and it has a weak 6DT8 FM front end tube. Did I mention the top of the cabinet needs to be refinished? And even though the record player is mechanically working excellent, it's still a bit of an eyesore. Corrody doodle, rusty, faded, baked. Well, the, the mat is still kind of soft, I guess. That it's sitting in the hot sun, it's softened up a little bit. Yeah, this is not in good shape. This is. This is not a good specimen. Oh, and if you're going to use it, it needs a full recap. Needs the electrolytics changed for sure. So, even though it, it remarkably the electrolytics don't get warm to the touch at all, and there's zero hum. There's zero 60 hertz hum with this thing. It's totally quiet, which is kind of amazing. Wow, the electrolytics are good, and but the rest of it's a bunch of garbage. That sounds contrary to what the internet tells me. I pulled the multiplex chassis out, and it's pretty interesting the way they designed this. They literally just designed it as a feed-through where this connects to the amp slash power supply, and this connects to the tuner. So you can just pull this out and just bypass it. Um, I was reading this, and I thought this was kind of interesting. License notice. This apparatus is licensed under the United States Patent Rights of Hazeltine Research. Uh, apparatus inventions of the United States Patent under the Radio Corporation of America. Now, I thought... If I remember correctly, Zenith Radio Corporation created, developed the stereo multiplex encoding, decoding standard that we use today. RCA developed the color, NTSC color encoding, decoding. And the FCC, of course, the FCC would test and approve these different systems and approve the one that was best. Which makes me wonder, you know, there was a, a time when our bureaucracies and leaders actually picked what was best and it seems like that held true. Now we got a bunch of bumbling morons that can't even hardly talk and are more interested in approving something or making decisions based on if it's woke and inclusive than if it actually will work and last the test of time. This stuff, although it might not have been the most ideal, it stood the test of time. We are still using the Zenith stereo encoding today. 
So tubes never really worked well in multiplex decoder radios. They need constant alignment. You know, the capacitance is different on practically every tube you put in. So if you replace the tube, you need to realign the multiplex. This, this is a highly critical thing. I mean, this is... The alignment of this is really delicate for this thing to actually separate the stereo. And you can see that they tried to build that into this. Look at mica, silver mica, silver mica, silver mica cap there. And that's interesting. I guess the the it's not a silver mica cap inside the can. It's an external silver mica. There's a mica domino, mica domino all disc capacitors. I mean they tried to build the reliability and stable you know stabilization into it as best they could. There's another silver mica. Who knows what's in this. This is something Philco would use. It goes bad. But I don't see how that filament would not be lighting up. I mean the, the filament leads are these two leads right here white and blue. Let me put six volts to that and see if it lights up out here. Okay, I should have about 6.6 .6 volts here. And yes, I, it is illuminating. You can see it there. So it is lighting up. So I wonder what was up. You know, I just noticed this. Four microfarad at... Uh, 50 volt. Maybe we better take the ESR meter to that and see if that's open. Yeah, they really... Uh, this is not sloppy. They really put some time in this. It's got a lot of 5% resistors in it. It's got two germanium detector diodes in it. I thought these had four. Yeah, this was a this was a step above for sure. So I don't know, tube is getting hot. Yeah, that capacitor is totally dead. Totally dead. Totally dead. This is probably where the monaural audio is fed through into the left and right. And then the decoded left right difference is added in afterwards that's why we weren't getting any uh, monaural audio just sounded hollow like it was only the stereo separation kinda like uh, uh, all, all chroma and no luminance on a TV just all color with no black and white image behind it so I have a feeling, yeah, let me see if I got something to stick in there. I just bridged a 4.7 in there. And I have a feeling I'm looking at the circuit. I have a feeling this is a 38, the oscillator. And that's the oscillator coil, I think. See how they had these shielded. There was a lot of engineering put into this. And yeah, you should cut the old one out. This is just a temporary quick fix. I just want to see this work. I have a ST1000A stereo alignment generator. I might dig that out. And we'll see if we can dial this thing in. Somewhere on here I saw a chart of what was what. Some of these are 38, some of them are 19. But there's a whole bunch of adjustments on it. So this is 38. I think you peak that. This is 19. I think you minimize that. I know one of them you minimize for whistle and noise, and the rest of them you peak. But look at there's one, two, three, four, four. There's six alignments. And then with the two pots, eight. There's eight alignment points on this thing. And I'm reading this as the 69th month of the 63rd 
year. So this is from 1963. So yes, now when I tune to FM Multiplex, I'm getting the full signal through there, not just the separated stereo information. So this is on FM Multiplex. That's regular FM. So yeah, big difference now with that four microfarad capacitor in place. Now I'm not getting a whole bunch of stereo separation, so I might dig the I might dig the ST1000 out and play with it. We know this tube is weak, and yet it was not lit. And I moved it around in the socket and it started glowing. But we know these tubes are weak, so it might not work. So yeah, it gets like ridiculously loud, and that's without the horn tweeters getting any uh, information because the capacitors are open on the crossover. It, yeah, it's loud. It's really loud. Oh, Backstreet Boys. Gotta love me some Backstreet Boys. Okay, so it's making sense now. That four microfarad capacitor connected from here to this um, potentiometer, and this potentiometer adjusts the amount of uh, non-demodulated. See, right now you're hearing you're hearing a lot of hum, but. I don't know what I screwed up to get the hum. Okay, what did I do? But anyway, this is like the, I think they call it the composite signal. So you want that in balance with the demodulated signal. Okay, that is a bad tube socket here causing that buzzing. Day. So that's the stereo demodulated signal you're hearing right there. What's working of it? So that's the that's the stereo demodulated information which is trash because this is not working. And then this adds the composite on top of it. Yeah, it makes sense. That four microfarad capacitor was opening, not passing the the base audio through, not without the separation. So, uh, let me see. I might dig the stereo generator out. I don't know if this is worth trying to tweak on or not. What's kind of cool is you can turn that down, but it needs that. It needs that in order to separate the left minus right or left plus right or however it works, I forget. Yeah, this crap with these bad tube sockets, man, it's just... Yeah, 
needs to just stop. Radio Free, KJLH. Listen to the It's all out of alignment. I dug the stereo alignment generator out, but before we do that, I think what we need to do is find everybody's favorite station on AM. All right. So we got to go in here. Did I just kill it? There it is. There we go. Today is a great day testing testing. This is only a test. This is a test. This is a test. This is only a test. This is only a test. Today is a great day testing testing. This is only a test. There she is. This is a test. This is a test. This is only a test. This is only a test. Today is a great day testing testing. This is only a test. This is a test. This is a test. This is only a test. All right. So what we can do? See, these things only go up to. Well, this goes up to sixteen hundred, and I think this station is seventeen something. So. Today is a great day testing testing. This is only a test. So what I usually do uh, to align these, the scale, is I'll put this at the top, I put this all the way at the top, and then I find her, and then I, I crank it down to, and stop it on that Asian station right below this is only a test, and that's about right. Okay. Now we're going to start this again, huh? This is a freaking hopeless case. God. St 
stay quiet. thing has issues. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, left, right, I got the pilot, I got the pilot cranked up pretty high. Oh, by the way, I've had to edit and re-upload the video four times so far. I got content ID on those old 78s, take it off. I got it on Pablo Cruz. So I just keep cutting little sections out until I get it through content ID. It's a real pain in the ass. So pilot is a hundred... So I can hear a little shift there when it goes into stereo. Stereo's off. Stereo's on. Boy, that's really a high pilot. God. The pilot kicks on up there. Wow. So I should be able to go from right speaker to left speaker. So I'm gonna try and align this. Now, really the way to do this is with the dual trace scope and you adjust them so you have maximum separation. But I don't wanna waste the time to hook a scope up to this junk, so I'm just gonna try it by ear. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do. Which I'm not going to be able to do. Ooh, that makes a difference. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I'm gonna need a scope. I don't think I can do it without a scope because, yeah, there's not a lot of definition in a I guess I could feed music into it, but then I got the copyright thing to deal with. Well, that's right. I'm gonna turn the pilot off. Okay, I'm gonna... working a little. I'm going to try and adjust it here. Well, the amp went into oscillation and you can see there, and I'm on the 50 volt scale. That is some massive signal coming out of there. If I pull this tube out, the oscillation goes away.
There we go. There we go. No, no. Left, right, nope, that's not right. Let's go back in a little bit. Ooh, that's getting closer. That's, that's left, right, See if we adjust this one here. Some of them don't seem to make a difference. Let me work on it. Let me see how good I can get it. I got it pretty good right now. But check this out. If I put this tube in, After a minute, it just goes into high frequency oscillation. Watch this. And look at, even if I turn the volume down, that high frequency oscillation is still there. You can't hear it, it's probably 30 kilohertz, but I'm gonna pull the tube out. Look at that. So is that a bad tube or is that, well, I think I could prove that. Let me try to take one of these out. Okay, the high frequency oscillation is still there. Take this one out, I'll put this other one in. Nope, something in the circuit. Is it this other tube? Nope, it's still oscillating. Put this one in here. Nope, it's still oscillating. You wouldn't even know that's there unless you had a scope on it. Okay, so if I pull this one out, I lose it. So I'm just going to go single-ended on both of them for right now. Boy, that looks like crap. This thing has issues. Lots and lots of issues. Lots of issues. But I, at least I got the multiplex working, kind of. I mean, I think that deserves a couple little gold stars. Yeah, this the amp is jacked up. The What isn't jacked up on this thing? I mean, look at that waveform. Isn't that beautiful? It's starting to get that smell again that I had last night. Here it comes. Oh, baby, that's freaking hot.
There you go. See that squiggly line? That's the pilot signal. I'm going to turn the pilot off. See? That's the pilot signal riding on top of it. So what you do is you just kind of tweak these for maximum See, that's killing the pilot signal. Then you just kind of tweak these for maximum separation. should be able to get it a lot better than this. But maybe with the weak tubes I can't. Yeah, it's weird. None of these other ones seem to do anything. I'll show you something else we can do cool with this thing. So we can take our iPod cord, plug it in here, external left and right, put this on external, then we can have a little Miss Miller on FM. Got to be careful with the uh, copyright on this, but stereo, we have Miss Miller and stereo. Uh, can we look at, oh yeah, there it is. Oh, hell yeah, it's in stereo. You can hear it. I better cut it out. Someone's going to call the cops. It's, it's in stereo. I can hear it. And if those tweeters were working, it would be nice. Okay, you want some stereo? I got, can only do a few seconds of this. Oh, 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 oh. We have smoke. We have smoke. It's dying. It's breaking on through to the other side. We have smoke. All right. I think that's it. We got to wrap it up right there. It died. Couldn't handle the doors. There's too much stereo for it. So in summary, it has the two horn tweeters here in the front. And... Of course, when you're listening to music, the majority of discernible, intelligible stereo separation is in the high end, not in the bass. And I can just imagine when this arrived at your house in 63, I think it's a 60, I think it's a 63 model year. Plopping down and sitting in front of this with one ear facing each side and listening to this new stereo broadcast that had just come out how amazing that really would have been to just sit there and listen to something so three-dimensional and cutting-edge for the time. Uh, I think that would have been just something so totally different and such an experience that somebody probably had. 
and here in uh, 2022 we kind of had our fun with it and watched it die a miserable death. I knew something was up with it because I could smell it yesterday and I think these there's there's problems all over this thing there are problems but miraculously I think I got every function of it to work so now to deal with all the music clips and content ID I hope you enjoyed it